pretty much have a monopoly and he just says, okay, you know, I'm not, I don't even need to look at it again. But if he looks at it and thinks, that really could be a penalty, he screams. Then when that happens, um, The basic protocol for the way that VAR is operated worldwide is the same, but I guess football has a slightly different culture in different places. And you know what's expected to be called as a handball in Spain is probably a little bit different to what it is in in England. Um, so therefore, you adjust your level of intervention from what that football environment, what that football community expects, I think, to be successful. There's no point doing something that, you know, the people that pay the money to come and watch the games or subscribe for TV coverage don't agree with. So, you know, you adjust accordingly. So you probably will see some slight uh, slight um, amendments to the way it's applied um, in different parts of the world. What I would say is that we're all still in our infancy in this, um, some less than than others, you know, we're now into our third season. The Premier League's just gone live, um, and with every passing match round and every season, you know, we we evaluate, we recalibrate about the way that we're doing it. We seek feedback, and we'll continue doing that. So, uh, you might see some changes, some some slight alterations about the way it's done, but by and large, it should be basically the same from our side. Nothing's changed. Maximum benefit for minimum interference and dealing with clear and obvious errors. A few, a few small differences between the way that we apply in MLS and, and in the way it's done in other parts of the world, such as the Premier League. Uh, first of all, we use the pitch side monitor extensively. So every time there's a video review recommended by the VAR, the referee will go to the screen, regardless of the type of situation. We do that for a number of reasons. One is that the, the referee has the chance to make a final decision on all situations. But also, it helps the stadium audience follow the narrative that's unfolding in front of them. So, you know, rather than just change a call based on some information over an earpiece, the, the referee is looking at the screen, everybody realises what's happening because there's something very obvious taking place. Um, it gives everybody a chance to catch up. It doesn't take that long. Uh, it only happens once every three games, on average. Uh, and then the referee makes the final call. Um, on the factual situations, um, in other leagues, they will tend to do it by information being passed through the earpiece and without the need to go to the screen. We did that at first here and we thought it was efficient to do it, but the feedback we got from our fans is that actually we know we like to see the referee go to the screen and make the final call. So the game has to decide, do they want it, do they want VAR to deal with such close margins or would they rather step back a little bit from those really close calls that are only identified through technology and go back to a person looking at the the, the footage of VAR making a, a human judgment about whether it's offside or not. That's maybe, maybe the way that, uh, that the game will want to go long term. It's the way we do it here. It works pretty well here. But I understand fully why some people would say, we want an answer. We want to know if somebody was offside. And if you've got the technology to do it, then, you know, we'll, we'll implement it. You know, there's a lot of um, scenarios where the on-field call is wrong but it involves a clear error you know even with the use of technology it's a several inches where the player was offside so we're capturing all those as well the conversation really rests around those much more tight situations that only technology can identify is that what the game wants and I guess we'll see that through debate and discussion in the, in the coming months and years <laughs>